Hey everyone, it's Sherry Vegas here and in this resin tutorial today I'm going to be doing the water ripple effect which is the latest sort of trending effect in resin. I am starting to see it absolutely everywhere on social media but today I'm going to be changing up the technique and trying out something new. So I have already done a video on this previously but this time I'm going to be completely changing the method to see if it is more effective and what is easier to do. So stay tuned and see how I do that. I'm starting out my first ripple effect using some air dried clay. If you watched my previous video on this, I used some textured paste and then made a silicon mold from that, which I then poured resin into to create my ripple effect. Today I'm doing something similar, but just not the same. I'm not actually going to be making a silicon mold and I'm going to be testing out three different ways instead of texture paste because I wasn't the biggest fan of texture paste. So for the first one, I'm just using an MDF blank to build off on and I'm just going going small with this because I'm doing three different ideas. So with my air dry clay, I'm just creating some sort of little mounds, I guess you could say like little mountains, all different heights, making sure that some are big, some are small, so that way I'm going to get a really good dimension when I do pour my resin on it. The air dry clay was really easy to work with. I was just breaking it off into small little pieces and then kind of molding it into my hand and then pressing it onto my MDF blank. This I really liked using and then once you're done and you're happy with your sort of overall look of your design, you can just leave that clay to just literally air dry before you do the next step. For the second water ripple design that I'm creating, I'm going to be creating my base on my MDF blank using hot glue. Hot glue was really easy to work with and you can create really like swirl patterns or just do a bunch of different dots. It's really buildable and moldable. So I did really like working with this. The only thing was I did find I used quite a lot of hot glue just to sort of build up that base to my design. So I don't know if it's like amazingly cost effective wise, especially if you're doing something bigger than what I'm doing. So if you're making like quite a decent size artwork hot glue might not be like the most cost effective but it was definitely very easy to work with and really easy to build it up because once it had dried you could just go back in with some more hot glue and layer it up so you could get some really high peaks some really low peaks and you could either do like swirls dots um, blobs like I'm doing make it really abstract really random it's completely up to you when you are doing it with the hot glue and when I was kind of happy with how my shapes were looking, I just wanted to smooth them out a little bit. And I just kept my hot glue gun on and just used that metal tip to kind of shape the hot glue and melt it down a bit more. So it was really easy to work with and sort of just make sure that certain areas were smooth or more blended in. So that way I wouldn't get too much texture coming through when I do add my resin to mold it from. And the last technique that I am trying is I'm going to be making my water ripples using polymer clay. So I've just got some polymer clay here and I'm rolling this out. I'm pretty sure this is the Sculpty brand, which I do find quite easy to work with because it's quite um, soft and moldable. So I've rolled that out till it's quite thin and then I'm just kind of roll like rippling it up, kind of smooshing it together, making a pattern. You can really do this however you want to do this. I do think I should have probably made it more big ripples and not have it curl in just because parts of when I was adding the resin do get trapped underneath when it does curl in which I'll go a little bit more into in depth. Once I was kind of happy with that and made sure it fit, fitted to my blank I then just dried that out in the oven. Originally my first idea was just going to be adding some painter's tape around each of my designs and then just pouring silicon, not pouring silicon, sorry, pouring liquid latex all over. But the liquid latex that I did get was a bit thicker than the one I normally buy. And when I did pour it all over inside my sort of barrier that I've got with my tape, because it was way too thick, it ended up just filling up too much of the lower points in my design and I kind of lost a lot of that sort of shape and dimension. You can see here, I was trying to like shake it around and get it to smooth out because the liquid latex I normally do buy is quite fluid. So it would just literally 
run all over and be a lot easier to work over. It wouldn't be so thick and fill in all of those lower points. So I did end up just get a brush and kind of like smooth that out and also move it out of a lot of the dips. So that way I did still have those high and low points that were more noticeable. For the other two coasters that I do have here, I did just end up deciding to paint on the liquid latex with an old paintbrush. Just note that if you are using liquid latex, it will kind of destroy your paintbrushes if you don't get the latex out fast before it does dry. So don't use any expensive brushes. You've got like probably a minute to apply it and then get it off your brushes um, before it does dry because otherwise it just completely dries in the brushes and destroys them. I ended up doing three coats of this, so I went around and just applied it nice and evenly, making sure that there wasn't too much in one area or I didn't lose any of my sort of high and low points. So I did one layer and I let that fully dry before I went back in and applied my second layer. And then I just kept repeating this process on my other designs as well. And I ended up doing three layers in total of liquid latex, just making sure that my liquid latex was nice and thick so that way there would be nowhere for that resin to grip to to the original sort of mounds that I have there. I originally did want to just go back around and tape it up with some painter's tape but you can see here I couldn't get my painter's tape to be a nice even circle so I did go and get some plastic sheet, cut that and then tape that back up. The resin that I'm using today is the Crystal Cast Resin from Make Art Resin, which is an Australian based resin brand, but you could obviously use whatever casting resin that you like. And then I'm just coloring that with just one drop of this turquoise pigment from Barnes. This is a translucent pigment, so it means it's gonna be see-through and it gives that perfect water ripple color, but one drop is like plenty for the amount of resin that I have because it is very, very strong. I then mix that through my resin and once that is fully combined with my resin I can then start pouring that over my different designs. It's really important to make sure that tape is nice and tight to your base and that you don't have any leakages because you obviously don't want that resin to just pour out. Now I did get a few little drips where it did kind of bleed a little bit under the tape but overall it was pretty good but I did just pour a little bit of resin into each one, testing it to make sure it didn't just suddenly start to leak everywhere before I did fully fill up all of the pieces. Then I'm just gonna go along once it's fully cured and that I left it for about 24 hours and I'm just gonna be peeling off that tape and plastic and then also just pulling my blank away so that way I can then take the latex off. Now they came off pretty easy, but in the parts where the resin did kind of leak under, I did just have to use my heat gun to kind of soften that resin so that way I was able to pull it away. So a heat gun is really helpful in this instance. But they all did pull away and they all worked out really well where none of the liquid latex um, stuck into the resin. It is really key to make sure that liquid latex is on nice and thick. If you only do one layer, it's probably going to be too thin and you'll find that the resin will seep through it and grip to whatever you've created your water ripple from which is obviously not what you want because you don't want any like bits of clay into your resin so by putting that latex on nice and thick I get those really cool water ripple effects so these are the three pieces this one was the one with the air dried clay which I think is my sort of favorite water ripple sort of technique I think it gives the best effect because it gives a lot of little bumps and a lot of like sort of texture into it and then this one is the hot glue which is really cool as well um, you'll get a lot more like circular formations with the hot glue I did use a decent amount of hot glue like three maybe four like uh, sticks of hot glue so I feel like the air dryer clay, if you're going to do big pieces, is going to be like the most cost effective, but it does work as well. And then this one is the polymer clay, which is good, but the thing that I should have probably done with the polymer clay is kind of make it more of like a ripple and not necessarily like curling in on each other because it was a lot harder to pull away um, getting it off the latex because some of it had curled under. 
And I did also give all of these a little bit of a sand around some of the edges, just so that way it's not the same height the whole way around. Because when you put the tape on and then pour the resin, when you do take it off, you're going to get the bottom being all the same height because it's coming off that way. So I did just go around and give all the pieces like a bit of a sand, adding a bit of dips in certain places where it would naturally dip just because I didn't want it to be like completely perfect. So I did that along all of these pieces. Now I can either just go back in and buff it out, just going through the different grits of sandpaper, or I can just give it a top coat with resin. But I think these have all turned out really cool and worked out really well. So instead of making a silicon mold, you can definitely just use latex and reverse that sort of process and you'll still get a really similar effect. So that way you're not having to make a silicon mold every time you wanna make a new sort of artwork. And I also think it's really kind of cool to try out different ways to make your water ripples. You know, I've used um, polymer clay, I've used hot glue, I've used air dry clay. I think my favorite's air dry clay, but let me know what your thoughts are for the favorite sort of ripple technique out of these three. And this is just how the three final pieces look now that I have top coated them. They look so good and so nice and shiny and water ripply. I'm really happy with how all three of these have turned out. Let me know in the comments below which sort of design do you like best? Do you like the clay? Do you like the glue? Or do you like the polymer clay? Which one do you like best? Let me know down below. I am very much leaning towards the clay just because I feel like it gives those really beautiful ripples. But obviously there are so many different ways and I also want to see your feedback. If you have watched the first video I did on this where I did make a silicon mold for this, what technique do you prefer? Do you prefer to make the silicon mold or do you like this idea using the liquid latex instead? I would love to hear your feedback on this and if you did find this video helpful, please give it a big thumbs up. It really helps my channel out. And if you are new to my channel, please do check it out, subscribe, and I've got a full playlist on resin. I've got so many videos on resin, so if you are getting into resin, definitely go and check those out. But thank you so much for watching.